Oh, Hello you. and welcome to the, this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Now, why is this called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know for the present. Also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Alexandra Wenman a holistic therapist, intuitive channel, writer and speaker. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching this show live or at a later date, as it means a lot to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, my name is Ray and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, um, angel cards and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation of angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Alexandra Wenman. Hello. Who is a, a pioneer of precious wisdom and priestess of the divine feminine Alexandra has a down-to-earth approach towards spirituality, channeling, and honouring our divinity, and is a trusted author, speaker, healer, poet, and presenter. She is previously an editor of the National Holistic Magazine and has articles by and about uh, that appeared in Spirit and Destiny, Natural Health, Wow, Women's Circle Chat, it's Fate and Kindred magazines. She's published her collection of poetry called Poems of Precious Wisdom, and she has a children's book, Dear Little Angels, and she hosts the Alexandra Women Show on YouTube. Alexandra has become a go-to expert and a wise woman in a world that is waking up quicker than ever before. So without further ado, hello Alexandra and welcome to the Angels and Destiny Show. How are you today? I'm good, thank you Ray. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm excited that you've started this. Thank you. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then whether you are watching live or the recording, please hit the like or love button as I love watching hearts and thumbs flashing across the straight screen. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all recordings. Now, you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Alexandra and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So Alexandra, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then about how Awakening the Divine Feminine to harness our feminine intuitive side can bring healing and balance and can help women take control of their destiny. Oh wow, um, where to start, right? <laughs> um, first of all, I'm I'm want to say I'm so excited that you're doing this Facebook live show because I think that the more of us that are out there doing this, the better. I think it's great. I think especially women, but it's not just about women. <laughs> the divine feminine is so much more than that. Uh, gosh, where do I start? So I guess. Um, I've been on a, an awakening journey for a very long time, since I was a child. I used to kind of see clairvoyantly when I was very little and like many of us, I closed it down. And then when I was in my twenties, I went through a, a series of huge awakenings. I don't think you can ever just have one awakening. I no. think the awakening process is like, I'm awake. And then it's like, oh, maybe I'm, what, I'm not as awake as I thought I was, because I seem to be yeah. having awakening and another and another and another um i uh it kind of started for me with angels like yourself i i mm. used to teach angelic reiki i had um the first kind of awakening big experience i ever had was with archangel metatron in a mm. workshop but to me there's no separation between us and the angels and i always felt that from that first experience anytime an angel came through it really did feel like i was becoming one with the angel I was sort of embodying it and then I learned angelic Reiki obviously and learned that it's possible to merge with an angel but I yeah. think we sort of are harnessing that energy and that is the divine feminine energy so to me every single one of us is psychic we all have intuition we're all magical um no one is you know better or worse than anybody else on that journey it's just where we happen to be and whether or not we choose to develop those senses and to me that's the divine feminine the intuitive uh, empathic nurturing side of us it's also the uh, the energy of the unknown the energy of the unseen and as we know sometimes that energy of the unseen and the unknown can mm -hmm. be 
scary because it also kind of comes to our shadow side. So I do a lot of work in my healing work and with my clients on delving into the shadow and delving into those parts of ourselves that we don't know about or that maybe make us a little bit uncomfortable or we don't want to share with the world that we're a bit ashamed of or embarrassed about. Mm. And it's all about harnessing those parts of ourselves, embracing them with love and healing them. So we transmute it, we, we transform it because if we're rejecting any part of ourselves, then we're rejecting ourselves, and we're rejecting essentially the divine because we are all divine. So we can't be separate from the divine. And I teach a little bit about sacred geometry. I have a healing system called Precious Wisdom, which is it. it's symbols and mudra and it's a beautiful gold mm. uh, energy. It's It came through for this whole golden age, this ascension period on the planet. Yeah. And so part of that is I teach about the links between science and spirituality and there's so much that's coming through now with quantum physics and everything that we know. So it's about understanding that we are actually uh, all divine. We can't be outside of the divine and that energy is unconditional love. So it's that love without judgment. And that to me is the balance of our masculine and feminine. Mm. So every person has a feminine side, every person, man or woman, has a masculine side, and it's just about balancing that, the intuition with the logic and the reason. So we can't really have one without the other, but what we've been having on this planet for so long is we've all been operating according to our masculine, logical, rational side, living in yeah. this kind of world of matter and ignoring or pushing aside or smothering or repressing that feminine side and that's kind of how our social structures are built but they weren't always like that we know that back in the day in ancient egypt and uh, in pagan times people were much more open to that magical side and i think what's hmm. happening now is this re beautiful rebalancing and you can see it happening in the physical world as well as within each of us as individuals you can see now that Man and woman are coming back into balance, right? Women are finding yeah. their voice, they're finding their power. Uh, we're breaking out of this old um, kind of competitive way that women have been mm. pitted against each other, right? I mean, people have been pitted against each other, but women especially, you know, been taught to yeah. for male attention or for whatever it is. And we're learning that we're coming in now to lift each other and to to put aside that competition and 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 just help each other rise because we all have a positive message to bring, especially those of us who are, I guess, on this awakening path. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, that's I guess really important. So I run circles and groups for women. Um, I teach healing workshops and I see people one on one so they can kind of feel safe to delve mm. in that side of themselves, the unknown, really yeah so so if um sort of like you know because because that's the thing it is trying to get in touch with our intuition our feminine side you know how would you suggest you know suggest that that people actually can do that on their you know on their own just as a basic as, as a basic thing does it start with self-love or does it just sort of like you know i want intuition you know how how, how do you reckon they should really start yeah, for me, it started with having with learning to love myself, and I think that that is absolutely key. Um, you know, especially as women, I remember like as part of my journey, it was all about I was trying to find love, and I think I was trying to find love outside of myself. And you know, the the main component of that was sort of you know acknowledgement from parents or friends or whatever. Uh, but then it went into romantic love and, you know, had my heart broken one too many times before I actually woke up and went slap, slap. You know, what are you doing? You're not waiting for your knight in shining armour. You are your knight in shining armour, you know. Come fall in love with yourself and then you're going to find the love that you need. And so from then, that was many years ago, and then from then it's been this journey back to self-love. And, I mean, I write about that in my poetry and all the different facets of that and, I mean, it, it can be a bloody painful journey. This shadow work, right? Mm. It's light and fluffy. I mean, one of the one of the biggest misconceptions I think about the spiritual path is that it's all rainbows and unicorns and fluffy and light, and that angels are this light, fluffy energy that's that are going to come in and rescue you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. It's like sheer power. It it will knock you off your feet if you're not being true to yourself, and it will pull the rug out from under you when you're least expecting it. If you, you know, if you do what I did and you kind of go, 
put me where you need me, be careful what you wish for, because you may just find that your life as you know it collapses around you. But, you know, you've got to have a sense of humour about it all as well and take it with a pinch of salt. So, yeah, it starts with self-love, absolutely. Simple techniques that you can do. One of the main things that I give my clients hmm. but very early on is to learn how to be in touch with your emotions and with your own energy field. So instead of being up here when you're making your hmm. decisions, just to drop your focus down into your heart center and feel your way through life more than think your way through life because often you'll find that your intuition might tell you one thing and your logic or your reason or your rational mind will be like but actually you could make more money doing that or actually you know common sense is x y and z but in my experience i've always found that anytime i've ignored my intuition that's when the rug comes out from under me and I you know if I haven't been listening to what I actually need to what my heart actually wants then you know that's where I upset the apple cart and that's where you know things start to go wrong and nothing really ever goes wrong because we're always learning lessons and we're always, yeah. you know being challenged but yeah that's the simplest way come into your heart Listen to your emotions don't think of your emotions as the enemy because they're your inner compass and I know that, like, this this um, year especially, and the last couple mm. of years especially, have been particularly hard for people. And for sensitives, it's been a bit of a washing machine. Yes. Um, think, uh, yeah, it's like, but it's. I think we're entering into a phase now where we physically cannot suppress our emotions anymore. It's like a no. pressure right? So you'll feel like brr, some of the stuff that um, I've experienced on a personal level is, an emotion it will get triggered in me, like mm. something that's you know being brought to my attention, and you can feel absolutely overwhelmed by these emotions sometimes. But instead of trying to push it down or shove it away or go, oh, I'm depressed and I can't do anything, um, I suggest that you invite that emotion up and make friends with it. So try to get a sense of first of all where it is. it's a trapped emotion. So get a sense mm. of where it might be trapped in the body. And sort of feel into it, breathe into it, and connect to the emotion with love. I sort of do this thing where I go, okay, emotion, whatever you are, I try to connect with it with love. Thank you for coming because obviously it's there because it's serving you for some reason. It wouldn't be there otherwise. And as you connect to it with love and you can ask, right, what is this emotion? There might be two or three key words that you attach to it. So it could be like shame or anger or frustration or guilt. And as you start to connect to it, start to give it a shape. I pretend that it's like almost got a little personality of its own. So if it's something like shame, you can imagine a shameful little person. Yeah. You know, like, and I sort of have a conversation with it, right? What have you come to teach me? How have you come to serve me? How are you? How are you assisting me? Now we know it's not, but again, it's like let's play devil, devil's advocate and see how. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, it'll say something like, well, I'm protecting you because if you get too big, well, you know, someone might kill you. You know, you might have had a lifetime of persecution and or you might have had something happen in childhood where it was a painful situation and you don't want to relive that. So you've held on to that emotion as protection. And that's usually what it is, some sort of bizarre. We, as humans, we're so weird. We do the opposite of yeah. what we should be doing, right? And like attracts like, but we think if we do the opposite, then we'll get what we want. But it's yeah. just all conditioning. It's really, really a bit weird and random and turned upside down, this planet. I find it all very strange. But I think if you make friends with your emotions and you make friends with the unknown and that feminine side, because that feminine side can be really nurturing and really soft at the same time. So bring that softness in to nurture that darkness and then you start to transform it. And that's what you know, I talk about in terms of alchemy, we're bringing in more light to transform our darkness and we're bringing in more love to transform our fear. And we're, we're opening the whole time more and more of our innate gifts because we have all these gifts available to us. We all have the ability to feel each other's feelings mm -hmm. and that's why it's becoming more intense now as more and more people awaken. You can literally feel what's going on on the planet you can feel what's happening on the news i can't watch it anymore no i um, don't watch the news no it's like you can feel everything like you can feel people's pain animals pain but it's about transforming it so anything that gets triggered in you the way you heal the planet is not to like 
oh, I send healing to everyone. I mean, we can do that. That's yeah. right. But heal how it's affecting you. So if you see something frightening on the news or if you see someone in pain, heal what it brings up for you. So the pain that it triggers in you or the hurt that it triggers in you. And then you literally dissolve that whole dynamic between you and that person or you and that situation, and that helps to heal the whole. So it's all. I think all the answers are in here, really, are, mm. are with ourselves. And so the more we love ourselves, even the ugly bits and the embarrassing bits, the more that we are loving the planet and the more that we're affecting change. And we're powerful. All it takes yeah. is kind, you know, like kind to yourself and kind to others. Yeah, it, it, it is, yeah, the, the kindness about it and accepting, you know, accepting that we do all have a dark side um, amongst us because if we didn't, we'd probably, you know, we'd be too far up um, floating around and, you know, hey, love, et cetera. You wouldn't actually be doing anything practical um, down this side. But say we were to uh, flip it over slightly and say that, you've actually got more feminine than masculine in, in, in yourself because there are some, you know, I've, I've come across women that, that come to see me and it's kind of like they are so feminine and so, uh, but they, they haven't actually got any of that masculine energy in them. Um, yes. so, so if we if we flip it over, you know, what what's one of the cause ways of getting into, you know, connecting to your masculine side? Well, it's like one my friend Lorraine has this great saying, and I love it, and it's trust in God, but tie up your camel. <laughs> and it's like, you know, trust in the universe, trust in the, the fluidity and the, and the divine flow of everything, but you actually have to take some practical steps to implement your life, like to yeah. actually, you know, you can have, oh, I trust the universe and everything comes to me at the right moment. But if you ignore that guidance and you don't move on it and take action, then you're going to get nowhere, really. So it is about the balance. It is about, you know, intuition and action. So I think use them both. Let them interact with each other. And, you know, we have to do practical things. Like I always think it's all about living heaven on earth. And heaven on earth isn't checking out of everyday reality. It's no. making everything we do sacred. So even if you're shopping for groceries or sitting on the loo you know or in the bath or whatever it is like if you make it like a daily intention or prayer that mm. every aspect of your day and every aspect of your life is a blessing and is a is you know guided by this benevolent loving force then your whole life is going to start to unfold in blessings and you'll be guided and you'll be able to follow that guidance and then implement the practical the practical part yeah. of it, me too. But your intuition, you, it, it always should come first, I feel, that following your heart and feeling your way. And then you go, okay, so based on that feeling, I'm going to take action and I'm going to I'm gonna do this for my highest good. Because if yeah. you have to wait, you can wallow around on your couch going, I'm waiting for a miracle. Well, yes, yes. Miracle. And you might not see it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah you, you could be um mary tilling saying evening ladies evening Hi, mary. mary thank you for what thank you for uh coming and watching but yeah it, it is um and i and i think that's where quite often people do um get kind of like stuck it's like okay i've read all these books the um you know the secret and everything you know the universe is going to do this at home, you know, I'm going to send send out all this energy, et cetera, and then everything's going to come to me. And it's like, actually, no, you do need to actually go out as, yeah, as well. But it's also pick and choose what path is right for you. There's so much spiritual knowledge. We're being inundated with it, and it's wonderful. There's so many teachers out there and so many books out there and all this stuff, but... It's like just follow the bits that resonate with you. Don't mm. just take anyone's word as gospel just because they're a healer and they seem to know what they're doing. You know, uh, discernment is probably the biggest test definitely that I've yeah. been through in this path. You know, uh, you know, there are a lot of, you know, there are sadly in our industry a lot of people that are just out to make a buck and, yeah. and don't have the, the highest and best interests of everyone at heart. Um, and, but I do know that most people are, doing the best they can with the tools that they have available to them. So, but it's like, be your own uh, knight in shining armor, be your own protector, 
common sense is also protecting your energy field and not letting yourself be taken advantage of, having healthy boundaries and all of those things that we're all learning in this minefield called the spiritual path. Uh, yeah. It's like walking through mud sometimes and, you know, and then finding a crystal in the mud and going, no. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing visuals. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I quite, I quite, I, I quite like those. You know, finding the crystal in the mud and the camel. You know, that makes <laughs> that makes absolute absolute sense to me. Um, so, if um, you so so we go go back to um, obviously discernment um, and and why normally you know if I'll always say to some you know go and look up several people and see which one resonates with you. But if someone is torn between two people or um, two different courses or, you know, different paths they want to take, you know, what's the what's the best way of them, you know, with their intuition, intuition to work out which one is the better for them? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like devil's advocate. I go, go and do both. No. <laughs> Oh, really Wonka's Chocolate Factory. No, there is a no, I'm going to watch that one. I'll, te I'll teach a little technique that's gotten me through my life really well, and it's my favourite thing. And I use a pendulum a lot of the time, but mm. I don't I don't rely on that pendulum. I, I use it just to check what I'm already hearing and seeing um, and feeling importantly. Like I use all my psychic senses in session. Um, I'm quite lucky in the fact that I've developed them quite a lot over the years. I've been on quite an accelerator. Mm journey and I'm naturally very clairvoyant um so I get I see and I hear and I feel and I have this very holographic experience when I'm working but I do use a pendulum but when I was just starting out and I didn't really have access to all of those gifts and I I, I saw but I didn't really know I was seeing yeah. people are hearing and seeing but they don't know because it feels like your your imagination and it sounds like your own thoughts but it's mm. more subtle than we think it's going to be but I I remember I had to go and do my life in the UK test. So very practical, right, going for my uh, English passport. I'd been here for six years or something and I was transitioning off my ancestry visa. And I, you had to read a 100-page booklet and then go and do a 45-minute test right. on life in the UK. And you probably know more about it than we do. I can't remember a thing. But uh, something about the potato famine and if you spill someone's pint in the pub, you have to buy them another one. But that's just common sense as far as I know. Yeah. Etiquette, but I went along and did this test. And even though I studied the book, I'd kind of read the book twice. But you get there, and it's multiple choice questions, and there's like four answers. But two of the answers on every question were so similar that it was quite confusing. So it's like, well, it sounds like that one, and it sounds like that one. And I discovered this ability by doing my life in the UK test because I was like, oh, I'm stuck between two yeah. questions on every question like it, it could be that one or it could be that one so something came over me and I sort of went hmm do you know what I'm gonna feel into this and I sat there with the test paper and I went down every answer and I was like okay does that feel right does that feel right and what would happen is as I came into like this core part of my body I, I bring my attention down into my heart or even better mm. down to the lower belly into your power center area or your solar plexus and i and i do this thing and i call it internal dowsing or you know internal pendulum thing and so what i do is i go in and in my mind first of all i go okay higher self and body intelligence please show me what a clear yes feels like show me a yes let me feel yes and then I feel, and in my mind, I just say, yes, 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 yes. I'll have what she's coming. <laughs> so it's like, yes, right? And you feel the positive, you feel a positive response. And so what happens for me is I feel like almost this excitement bubbling up. It's like a, a positive energy. I feel my energy field open and expand, a bit like a rosebud expanding into a rose. If you could feel what an expansion and an upliftment feels like for you because your sensations might be different. Mm. But my feeling it is kind of like a, oh, it's like a welling up, like almost an excited bubbling up energy for a yes. And it's really clear. So yes, yes, yes. And it's like, and sometimes my ears will um, 
get a roaring in them, like like a yawn. You know when your ears roar when you're yawning? It's like an excited, like that. Anyway, so I get that's my yes. And then I come back to neutral. So going right, bring me back to neutral. Please, higher self and body intelligence, show me what a no response feels like. And then I'll feel it. For me, it feels like an in and down feeling, whereas the other is up and out. Yeah. So I feel like a closing in, a shrinking, a contraction of energy. And sometimes I'll feel tightness in my stomach. And it's probably going to be stronger dependent on um, how right and wrong it is for you. You know, like if someone tells you to do something and it's really completely against your will, you'll probably feel that constriction in the belly. Yeah before you've even asked and a lot of people mistake that for nervousness or feeling insecure and mm. so I do what they're saying because I'm not confident enough to make the decision but sometimes that really is your higher self saying actually that's the wrong decision for you and yeah. or you're in the wrong place to make that decision if you're feeling insecure about it so listen to your body I went through that test and finished it in 20 minutes and passed with flying colours. So I'm now, I've been a British citizen now for like the last 20 years. Well, 20 years. Um, but I loved that. I was so excited by that. I was like, oh, my God, I've got magic. <laughs> All I have to do is listen to my body. It's amazing. And I've been using that ever since. I, you know, even did it on my uh, driving theory test as well. <laughs> well done. Yeah, so I, I just say listen to yourself. Don't take your, your inner guidance over and above mm. anyone else's and then if that still doesn't work maybe you can take guidance from somebody else or try and get a pendulum or do mm. both or do neither you know maybe yeah. it's neither maybe there's something else that's coming to you ask the universe to really show you like ask for a sign ask for um you know please universe show me unequivocally a sign as to what i'm meant to do but the key with asking is to remember to come back to trust so yes. you, when you ask, you must trust that you will you will you will receive that sign or that you will find the answer because if you're sitting there worrying about it, you as we know, you can block what's coming to you. So it's quite a simple little technique, but it's mm. got some tricky situations and got me into some good situations. So Yeah, no, that, that's 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 actually a really uh, you know, a really good tip. Um, you know, and this, you know, Get, get to know your body and how your body reacts to you know to, to various things and then if you still don't get the answer yes find someone or get a pendulum um you know even use your necklace as a pendulum if if you want to yeah uh, and you can do muscle testing there's another one where i love this one where you rub your thumb and yes together yeah and it's it will be rough or smooth depending on yes or no you yeah can even, or what you know should i drink this or should i eat this but it's like Again, I say, don't get caught up in that. Like, no. don't put power outside of yourself and always rely on that. But, you know, just start to build up your own emotion, your own emotional intelligence so that you can really clearly start to discern. Like, now I've been working on this for so many years for myself and with my clients. That now, if something's wrong, I know it's wrong and I know like that. Yeah. It's right, it's right. And, you know, I, I never, I never, ever doubt myself. Always trust yourself and your higher self over and above anyone else outside of you i feel so yeah that 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 makes that makes absolute um sense and, and thank you very much for, for for that little tip um now i could we could actually go on with this conversation forever so i'm going to have to get you to come back on the show at some point so we could actually continue this or or, or, or something else um so now you're actually going to get a little bit anyone who's um, watching this is actually got a little bit of extra today because um as you know i do guided meditations and angel cards i mean each week I ask my guests would they like a mini guide meditation or angel card um so i was chatting to alexandra earlier and what we've decided is i'm going to do an angel card for you and then alexandra is going to see what she might channel or pick up as a message for all of us um here so um i'll start with the cards first and as usual, um, those that know, when I do the cards, um, I do the cards for what we need to know for our, for our highest good at this present time. Because although I work for the past, to me the past is for healing, I work with the future, but the future is um, we get to come and we bring that future into our present, so everything's to the present. So let's see what the cards have got, so what we need to know for our highest good at this moment in time. 
Okay, so what does everyone watching this live or the replay need to know if that is good? Okay, so I'm going to do my hospital list. Okay. 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 So when it's come out, aha, uh -huh. and we have got a transformation, a fresh new way of living emerges. If I get that up, so that, that way round. Is that a phoenix? Or a, yeah. That's a phoenix. Yes, so which is absolutely brilliant, especially as we're sort of like coming into a new year, which officially, or oh, to, to my mind, as my pagan mind, starts next Friday, um, the 21st, not the 1st. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, transformation. I mean, I don't really need to actually read this um, or do anything with it because I think it kind of like just says it all, a fresh new way of living emerges and the transformation does come from within yourself. You know, if, if you do take that step of self-love and going in and allowing your true self to come out, then the transformation that takes place can actually take you anywhere that you actually want, want to go. So it's absolutely brilliant that this card has, has come up for us today. So uh, yeah, that was brilliant that that one came out. I'm really pleased with that one. Thanks, Ray. Oh, I just realised I'm wearing this necklace and it's made from um, cicada wings. And ah. um, it just naturally drops, but it's all about cycles and how they, they go, a lot of them go underground and then come out during the moon cycle. So it's all about cycle so, season yeah. as well. I, 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 for some reason, I haven't worn it for years. I had to put it on for this show. There you go. That's the, that's the angels for <laughs> you. <laughs> I love it. Amazing. So should I should I tune in and just see? Yeah, just just see. Who's watching? How long have we got, Ray? Just so I don't. Um, well, it's my show, so technically I can. Oh, I can go as long as I want, really. I've got time if you've got time. Um, I've, got, I've got plenty of time. Okay, so I just thought for our lovely viewers, one thing I want to say is. Um, with any channeled guidance, sometimes what it, whatever comes through will be like a message or a visual. I sort of share what I'm seeing, hearing, feeling, and what's coming together. Um, but usually what will come through is a message from a guide or an angel or a being of some kind of the light for what the people watching need most right now. Mm -hmm. But with any channel guidance, it isn't just about the words. So what I encourage you to do is actually feel the energy, feel the vibration of what's being said that's coming through. It's it's not so much about the words, that's the masculine component, it's about the space between the words that is important because whenever I bring through a channeling, it's usually a fifth dimensional energy or above and it comes with a healing frequency with it. So uh, we'll just see, I'm just gonna close my eyes mm -hmm. and I just invite you to close your eyes and just start to breathe into the heart and breathe in light into the heart. And we're gonna to start to just draw in light from infinite divine source all around you from the sun and the stars, from all dimensions of light into the heart. Just breathe that light in. Breathing light up from the heart of Mother Earth as though the heart of Mother, Mother Earth was a diamond radiating or emitting a beautiful beam or a pulse of light with every heartbeat and just feel the heartbeat of Mother Earth beating in time with your heart. And be aware of a beautiful crystalline energy coming in and around your energy field like a multifaceted diamond. And as you're aware of this, it's a little bit like a cocoon of light or a jewel of light and this is divine energy I want you to imagine that it's both fluid and fixed. It's permeable, it's liquid, but it's also fire. It's a diamond light, a beautiful diamond ray. And it is essentially your true light. This is the ray of purity. It is our ascension flame, our ascension ray. And it's the light of the goddess. This is divine Sophia Shekinah energy, the light of the Holy Spirit. And as you breathe it in, you're breathing in a holy breath. So you're acknowledging that you are holy, that you are divine, that you are light itself, that you are the essence of love. And just breathe in a few more times, just allowing that light to now start to ignite a flame in each of your chakras and feel that flame as white light 
just illuminating each chakra, each energy center in that diamond white light and feel all meridians of the body opening into that diamond white light. And just feel yourself as this multifaceted jewel of divine mother father energy and then just tune into your vastness as though you could open your mind your vibration multi-dimensionally opening to all dimensions of love but allowing that only energies that are for your highest and best good will connect with you in this space because this is a frequency of love vibration I want you to imagine that standing behind you now is a ginormous angel with huge white wings. And she's carrying in her hands a beautiful chalice or cup made of crystal. But this cup has a lid on it, so the top of the cup is actually spherical. And I want you to imagine that in this cup, is a beautiful elixir a drink of divine love energy elixir of life elixir of light and i want you to imagine that as you lift this cup to your lips and you drink this elixir of life that this beautiful healing light will go to any place within your body or energy field where you have been feeling any old stuck pain any trapped emotions, any hurt, any hardship, anywhere the energy hasn't been flowing as freely as it should and just feel this go to that place and it might be a physical injury that you're dealing with or it might be an emotional constraint anywhere you've just been feeling it, it could be a, a pattern or something that you've been dealing with in your daily life that keeps coming up for you to heal and just set the intention that you're sending this healing balm right into the root cause of that issue now and send a message to the universe i'm ready to release this i'm ready to release this and then just hold the energy of forgiveness for yourself first and foremost for having gone through that or having been dealing with that situation just feel it like a healing friends in bond healing life. i want you to imagine now that walking towards you is a beautiful woman with long dark hair in a beautiful red velvet cloak and she lifts the hood of the cloak from her head and her face is luminous. She's iridescent in her light and her beauty, the beauty that shines from within and without. And this beautiful woman hands you a beautiful red apple. And this red apple symbolizes knowledge and wisdom, ancient wisdom, your own ancient wisdom. And this apple is a fruit of life. And within the apple is the five-pointed star, the symbol for the divine human. All elements represented, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit or ether. And as you bite from this apple, you begin to feel more whole. As though you're retrieving lost aspects of your own soul energy, parts of you that perhaps you haven't accessed parts of your own ancient knowledge that you have perhaps closed down or forgotten through lifetimes and lifetimes. And this is particularly aspects of your feminine self, your divine feminine side, your lost magic. And also that childlike wonder, that sense of enchantment that you had when you were younger being returned to you and as you bite from the apple you can see your reflection gleaming in the surface of the apple and you can see that with every bite that you take you're becoming more and more radiant more and more luminous and you now see that as you get down to the core of the apple 
And you place that core of the apple back into the earth as a gift back for Mother Earth and to plant new seeds on your journey. You gaze at the woman before you, that loving being, and you realize that you are glowing with the same luminosity that she is glowing with. She opens her cloak and you can see that embroidered on her dress is a gold letter M. And you recognize this energy as Mary Magdalene, priestess of the feminine, of the divine feminine. She has come for you to reawaken to your true purpose and to heal all old wounds. And the most powerful message she brings is one of compassion and forgiveness. And you feel her place a hand on top of your head in a blessing. And you can feel the energy of such deep, loving compassion flowing in your crown, all through your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit. As are lifetimes of sadness being washed away from you in this river of light. How you can feel this motherly love coming from this beautiful goddess. As she says to me, my child, my child, my daughter, Allow yourself to be absolved. Let go of your unforgiveness towards yourself. Let yourself be freed of anything you thought you had said or done, of any deed, of any action that you are judging yourself for. Come back to love. Come back to light. Come back to the womb of the mother. Come back to the heart of creation. Come back to the goddess. And let her cleanse your tears. And let her take you in her arms and hold you. And where you are weary, let you find solace. And where you are hurt, let you find relief. I have returned. I have come forward for all my daughters and for all who seek the path of wisdom. I am here to forgive mankind their shortcomings. For all men and all women are born innocent. Return to your innocence, sweet ones. Come back to your light. She reaches out and places a small blue white crystal into the palm of your hand and you can feel the energy radiating from this crystal. This crystal is a symbol that this meeting has indeed occurred here today. Take this symbol and place it into your heart center. For somewhere in your daily waking reality, you will see this crystal. You will see it either in a picture or you will find it. You may already have it. You may recognize it. It is a gift of hope. It is a remembrance and a clarification assisting in your return to innocence. So let down your struggle and let yourself rest.
and let your emotions be released and washed away in her soft caress. And as you breathe in the light of that crystal of hope, let it melt into your energy field, becoming as a liquid fire once again, filling your energy field from head to toe, washing over you, filling every cell, molecule and atom with the knowledge of your own purity, your own innocence that soft, sweet child within, that loving soul who is trying so very, very hard to do good upon this planet. Let that soul be acknowledged. Let that soul be softened, loved, nurtured and held in a gentle embrace of Divine Mother. Let her wash your tears. Know now that she stays with you always and she gifts you with a red velvet cloak of your own, a cloak of Compassion of a cosmic power, compassion that goes beyond the level of compassion even possible on this earth. A beautiful ruby red magenta cloak to cocoon you, to hold you, to caress you, and to keep you safe. And feel yourself blazing in this ruby ray now. Feel it turn into a ray of fire. Feel your emotions being transmuted. And then feel this fire become a rich, sparkling, golden energy. And feel the phoenix surround you with its flame. Something is coming for you on the horizon. Something you cannot see, a gift awaits you. So the invitation is to begin to feel excitement about this miracle coming into your life. And it may be something you've been asking for for a long time. It may be something you really deserve. You may not be aware of anything that you want, but this thing that is coming into your life, whatever it is, it's yours. You've earned it and it is imminent. So feel excitement billowing up through you, through your heart, through your chest. And if you wish, send a signal out to the universe with a huge yes. Yes, I am ready. Yes, I receive this miracle with joy in my heart, with gratitude and with grace. And send your phoenix flying off into the sun with that message to your higher self. I'm ready to transform. My time has come. Breathe back into your heart. Feel that multifaceted, cocooned crystal that we first worked with forming around you again and feel it form into a beautiful diamond shape around you. And feel it become the hardness of a diamond on the outside, mirrored and shining for protection, soft and effervescent and malleable in the center so that you may shine as brightly as you wish whilst still remaining safe, secure, and grounded in your daily life. And before you open your eyes, just set the intention that you're gonna bring all of this light and all of this healing that you've received right back into your daily 3D earthly reality. So taking a deep breath in, and opening your eyes, coming all the way back into the room.
Ow. That was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. That, that was really, really, really beautiful. Um, and anyone that's um, watching this live or watching the uh, replay, you know, feel free to put your experiences on there um, with, with, with what you got with what you got when when uh when 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 that was going on i mean for me it was like the end of my nose kept tingling and then it's sort of like all this love and it was sort of vibration and that it's really it was really lovely so thank you very much alexandra for that for doing that for us that's wonderful Pleasure, honey she i wasn't sure who was going to come through then but she was gorgeous she looked like she came skipping in like red riding hood <laughs> <laughs> And then the hood came off, and it was like, wow, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. She just, she was just, ra yeah, she's just radiant. Yeah. And that, and then it's sort of like I became really radiant as well. It was absolutely wonderful. It was, it was really, really good. So yes, thank you very, very much for that. My pleasure, honey. I think we all needed a little bit of that at the moment. It felt, yeah, we're so hard on ourselves, and half the time. We don't even realize we're doing it, do we? You know, no. the mind that chatters away and, you know, just to remember to come back to that. Actually, do you know what? I'm, I'm a pretty good person, you know, at the heart of everyone is that innocent child that just needs a bit of acknowledgement. Yeah. Especially yeah, before maybe. Christmas, you know, before Santa comes and we get all, <laughs> <laughs> we get all our presents. Make sure we get our order fulfilled. <laughs> 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 oh, oh Mary Saran on there. Thank you, lovely. Walked Aww. all the way through with you. Really enjoyed. Oh, thank you for staying all the way through, Mary, and and thank you for uh, participating. That's well. It's really, really nice. Mm. And that. So um, I hope everyone that you've um, enjoyed this and found it very insightful, and that the words of wisdom Alexandra has given you will help you further on your journey. Now, Alexandra, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? What's the best way of them connecting with you? Uh, it's very easy. My website is alexandrawenman.com. Um, I'm, I'm always on Instagram, which is Ale at Alexandra C. Wenman. And you can find me on YouTube. It's the Alexandra Wenman Show. And uh, like, like Ray's doing, I interview different healers and therapists, but I also d like follow a few, go go off on a few adventures when I go traveling, and I interview crystal shops, and I do talk about angels and crystals, and it's like anything and everything to do with like awakening consciousness, spirituality, ethical fashion, and travel. It's a bit of everything, really. So I try to build a bit of a community around it as well. So, so yeah. yeah the main bits i'm on facebook as well but yeah it's it's all linked so yeah and i have to admit i've actually watched some of alex um, alexandra's shows and they are and they are really good and they can be from any anything <laughs> um that, you know egypt or marrakesh you know wherever or just in a you know just in a house somewhere there they are really really worth really really worth watching and what we'll do is we'll actually put those links in the comments so you've got something to actually um click on so thank you so much for watching and i would like to invite you to share this video as i'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and if you need help in finding your destiny and getting clear on your path then i would love to be that guide for you reach out and connect to me as i'd love to book a free 20 minute session with you to have a quick chat so i can find out more about you and how i can help you on your journey and by the way, I will see you next Wednesday, the 19th at 8 p.m., where I'll be having a conversation with my guest, Georgie Dane, who's a singer, healer, teacher, and founder of Angelic Harmony Therapy. And she'll be talking about finding your angel within. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you then. Bye. Yay.